So the organized rape and destruction of our country continues uh, as the elitist leaders, the Hunger Games-esque elite crowd votes again to give your money away to the highest bidders, to foreign nations that you have nothing to do with, that unfortunately some Americans have been brainwashed to care about, but in reality it has nothing to do with the average person and, and, and you know, the average American, okay? Ukraine is Ukraine. It's in Eastern Europe. It has to do with Russia. It has to do with the Ukrainians and, you know, the people there. The average American is not going to benefit for, from $40 billion being given to Ukraine to fight the elite's war, okay? To fight the NATO proxy war against Russia. You don't think these people, first of all, they love the idea of another war, right? Uh, the military industrial complex that pays most of our politicians and basically owns our government is salivating at the idea of, you know, the Ukraine situation getting worse and worse and worse and, and us having to get directly involved instead of it being a proxy war. So this is what this is. This is building up toward that. This is giving, giving away your money, printing billions and billions, trillions of dollars, really, Every single year now, it's like the, it's just, we just accept it. It's like we're driving the nation into the ground so fast. It's organized, folks. This is the great reset, okay? As baby formula is nowhere to be seen or found, and, you know, babies are basically starving, especially the babies that need the specialized uh, you know, formula, uh, babies with food allergies, babies with vit vitamin or mineral deficiencies and stuff like that. Not all women can breastfeed their babies. So this is a serious issue. It's a really bad shortage right now with baby formula. Of course, your average politician here in the U.S. doesn't care about that. Instead, they voted 368 to 57 to give away your money to Zelensky so he can fight his li gay little war, right, with his Azov battalion. They, they, they just had a concert in Ukraine, by the way. U2 and Bono just performed there in the middle of Kiev. And we're supposed to think it's like some sort of humanitarian crisis or something. And, and this is why, like... It's just really sad that the average American's been brainwashed to support this. Like, you ask the average person if they support the $40 billion of their money going to Ukraine and to help Zelensky, they they, they love it. it. So so in the end, it really is. They're just brainwashed into accepting this. So, yeah, I guess, I guess the Republicans and Democrats are voting for the will of their constituents at this point because the media's brainwashed them. So... Moving on in this article, the House voted 368 to 57 after President Joe Biden urged quick congre congressional action and Republicans bulked at passing an additional $10 billion in COVID relief funds along the military and humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. All 57 no votes came from Republicans. I guess that's worth noting. Most Republicans are just totally corrupt. They're useless. They're corrupt. They're paid by the military industrial complex and they're on board with all of this. And they, they voted for the trillions of dollars that are being printed. They voted for giving away your money to Israel, to, you know, all these countries in the Middle East that you have nothing to do with as well. You know, they're very much on board, but there are 57 of them that are America first, I guess. Hey, it, hey it's not bad. That's not bad, though. So, yes. We can take the country back, I think, through the Repu Republican Party. I'm not one of these people that thinks uh, policy and politicians are are really the, the, the solution to our problems. But in your local elections, especially in state senates and state house um, elections, like what's going on in New Hampshire right now, where they just voted to basically eradicate emergency powers— forever in that state so you'll never have another covid lockdown in new hampshire they're they're codifying that into law that the governor there can't declare a state of emergency and that's all because of the free state project elect electing local officials in the state government and that's really what's important the federal government's gone right maybe we could t take back the house i don't know but but for the most part it really is a lost cause 
And that's sort of the point here. Look at this. 368 to 57 to, to give away your money. This really does piss me off so much because the, the whole thing is about the corruption there. And it's all about covering the asses of the elites in the Democrat and Republican Party that are involved in the corruption in Ukraine. Because you have guys like Zelensky, like Kalamuski or Kalamoys- Kalamoyski that were involved in Burisma that were involved with Hunter Biden and others in the Democrat Party and all this, all the connections within that corrupt, you know, group of people that were also involved in, you know, funding the Azov Battalion, that's Kalamoyski, and all of the war crimes that went on in the Donbass region with that, the past few years, since back when Biden was the vice president, and... It's all about covering that up because if Russia wins that war, all of that comes out. All of the corruption that went on there and all of the arms buildup and the biolab facilities and the the war crimes that happened in the Donbass region and the support from the Bidens and the other Democrat operatives and the American elites that were involved in the corruption there and funding all of that. So this is just them covering their asses. This has nothing to do. Do you think we're going to benefit at all if Ukraine and Zelensky and his gay Azov battalion wins that war? Like I'm talking like your average (laughs) farmer in America. Do you think that's going to really help them? No, and yes, there's food shortages, but that has to do with the war itself, not specifically whether one side wins, because a lot of the grain and and uh, and wheat and stuff come from both Russia and Ukraine. So you know, there's a the, the, it does affect you in that way. But whether Russia or Ukraine wins the war, it really, really, what we need is peace in that region. It doesn't really matter who wins. Uh, for that to alleviate the food shortage of of wheat and grain in the world. And that actually mostly affects Africa. And what you're going to see as a result of this war with the shortages as well, with with food and stuff coming from the breadbasket of the world over there in Russia and Ukraine, Eastern Europe, you're going to see a lot of people in third world countries like Africa and stuff like that where they get their grain from there. They're going to be starving and they're going to actually probably migrate up to Europe. You'll have another migrant crisis just like you did in 2015. So this is what I'm talking about. It's, it's all connected and this is all done by design. It's the Great Reset New World Order Plan. Rep. Andy Biggs, Republican of Arizona, who opposed um, the measure, tweeted, I oppose Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But we can't help Ukraine by spending money we don't have. Totally agree. One of the good guys. One of the good guys in the house there speaking. Totally agree. And this, I don't think people realize how, this is like chipping away at everything. This is chipping. Look at this. Look at this. Where is it? Inflation barreled ahead at 8.3% in April from a year ago, remaining near 40-year highs. That just came out today. Inflation still sitting at 40-year highs, and really it's probably well above that because they changed how they calculate the CPI now. So this is the worst inflation you've ever seen in your life, okay? Stagflation too with the crypto crashing, S&P crashing, everything crashing. So, and what do they do? As, as, as the babies starve and they can't be fed because of the, the baby formula shortage, instead of how much baby formula could we produce here in the U.S. with $40 billion? If we just invested all that in trying to get baby formula here, I don't care if they produce it, buy it somewhere, I, I don't know. Look, if we just $40 billion, baby formula. That, I mean, I, mean I, can't, I care way more about the babies here in the U.S. than I care about Zelensky and his dumb Azov battalion. I don't know about you, right? I guess that makes me the bad guy, though. I guess I'm the bad guy. Isn't it funny, though, too, how all of this is happening as the whole abortion debate is happening? You know, baby formula shortage, and then we're also discussing whether or not we should murder babies. So this is the type of stuff, it's kind of like, it's just the world is so screwed up. Um, it's, it, This is what happens when... when when a civilization collapses, it's like, it's just going to get so much worse. We're in so much trouble, dude. 
Like, we're really in a lot of trouble. I don't just say that. Like, we are screwed. We are screwed, dude. We're in so much trouble, bro. Okay? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. All right, so I'm, I'm totally ranting, but I'm really pissed off, like, reading this. I really... It's like just... It's, I feel like I'm losing my own money when I hear about this. The House voted 368 to 57 after President Joe Biden urged quick congressional action and Republicans balked at passing an additional $10 billion in COVID relief. Yeah, I know. COVID relief, yeah, that's a whole... I mean, at least that's going to America, though. I mean, I'm, I'm not for that. Don't get me wrong. But at least... Like, it's like, okay, we're going to COVID a relief to, you know, have, I don't know, I don't, they probably spend it totally irresponsibly, but uh, at least it's like, it's like an effort. It's like a wink and a nod and a tip of the hat of like, okay, well, this is going to America. I bet you half of it probably isn't even, I bet you half of it is just going to Canada or something. I mean, this is, this is what I'm talking about, dude. It's just, it's just crazy. Um, House Speaker uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, praised the largely bipartisan vote, saying on Twitter that the package would build on robust support already secured by Congress and and help uh, Ukraine defend not only its nation, but democracy for the world. I don't know why people care about democracy so much. You know Hitler was elected democratically, right? This is what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure like Stalin was too. I know Lenin wasn't, but (laughs) they they just overthrew the czars to get Lenin in there. I don't know. Stalin probably probably was not democratically elected. I don't know that much about that. You know, I read Gulag Archipelago, but I forget half of it now. I got to reread it. So the supplemental finding measure now heads to the Senate. And of course, the Senate will approve it. Uh, GOP leader Mitch McConnell said Tuesday that he asked Biden last week to separate the coronavirus aid from the Ukraine funding. I had a chance to call the president last week and request the Ukraine package move by itself. And quickly, McConnell said, uh, this has nothing to do. Like, who cares, dude? Who cares if you separate it at this point? They're both going to pass. Why does it matter? Uh, See, this this is what I'm talking about. It's like Biden told Congress on Monday to pass the Ukraine aid without the COVID relief funding. His decision to decouple the two spending packages is likely is likely to make it harder to pass the uh, the COVID relief, which the administration said is needed to continue to provide widespread testing and free vaccinations. First of all, the, the oh, I'm not even going to go on this YouTube. I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed. Not allowed. So it's like, yeah. Anyways. Anyways, again, this is all about just covering their ass, right? Of course Biden wants this to pass. They need Ukraine to win the war. Bono and the Edge held a concert in Kiev subway station in support of Ukraine. Look at how dumb and fake and gay this is. Like, seriously. Cringe, and I like. I thought this is like. Uh, I thought Kiev was being invaded. What's going on? Like, I thought the Russians were ruthless, just bombing everybody. Just like, oh, you know. I thought it was like. Um, I thought it was like uh, Dresden. I thought it was like <laughs> Fallujah. I got. What's going on here? They're in the middle of Kiev having a nice little concert. Oh, this this is nice. This is I mean it looks looks like fun. Who wants to go to Kiev? And look, I'm not trying to downplay. I know especially in some of the regions there like Mariupol, it's it's serious. Like look at uh what's his name? Patrick Lancaster, uh some of his footage. Like, yeah, there's some serious stuff going on. But it's just <laughs> It's almost like they're just throwing it in your face that like 
especially when they they send Bono there. It's like this is globalist approved. This is UN approved. Bono is like what what is he? He's just like a cheerleader of the new world order. You know, wherever they send him, whatever he's supporting and talking about, it's like the epitome of the, the, this sort of uh, globalist um um uh, breakaway civilization and and you know, he's just always like the face of it for some reason. It's so weird. You know, they always have him speaking on behalf of like, uh, you know, Forum for the Future or the World Economic Forum or the UN or, or you know, like this is Council on Foreign Relations or, you know, these, these sort of World Wildlife Fund. <laughs> you know, it's always, I guarantee you, if you Google everything I just said, Bono, you will find something where he's like doing something for them or in collaboration with them or he's involved with that throughout the years. Like it's always Bono. I, I don't know. It's weird. It's funny. It's kind of funny. Two members of the Irish rock band U2 played a concert in Kiev, so, uh, Kiev su subway station on Sunday performing some of their classics and sharing the stage with Ukrainian musicians. Bono and The Edge wrote on Twitter that Ukrainian President, President Zelensky had invited them to perform in Kiev as a show of solidarity with the Ukrainian people. I'm sure he feared his life. I'm sure he feared for his life. And that's what they did, playing a roughly 40-minute acoustic set to a crowd of about 100 people gathered in the relatively relative safety of the metro station turned into bomb shelter. So this is... <laughs> yeah, come on. And it's like only 100 people went. It's like... They perform hits like With or Without You, Desire, Angel of Harlem, and Vertigo to a rapt audience that included soldiers in military fatigues. Don't these soldiers have anything better to do? Aren't, isn't their country being invaded? Look, I understand some... The, like, even during a war, they'll have, like, wind-down time and, like, a rotation for soldiers. But still, it's just a... It's kind of a bad look. I see this, and I'm like... I don't know. To, to me, it's just... Especially... Like, the last group I'd want performing in my country if I was at war is you 2 Like, really. It's a bad look for people in the know. People like me and you watching this channel. It's a bad look. It's like, well, this is a way to get half of America or at least a quarter of us to not trust your country and to think this war is a globalist New World Order, you know, um, PSYOP. It's a great way to convince everybody of that, to send Bono there. Bono addressed the audience between songs, songs praising the Ukrainian resistance and expressing his hopes for peace. At one point, the Irish Times notes, he invoked the struggles of his own home country, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we get it. And yeah, we got the footage of them. <sighs> Whatever, you know. Whatever. Yeah. So, U.S. House passed the $40 billion in aid. All 219 Democrats voted in favor of it. 149 Republicans. Uh, and then only 57 voted no. The only people that voted no are Republicans. It is worth noting. Now, as this is all happening, we have the baby formula shortage. Not one penny of you, that $40 billion is going toward baby formula. I want people to really understand that. Really just let that sink in. Um, so a lot of this shortage is due to recall. Uh, Abbott Nutrition is issued voluntary recalls of its baby formula. Um, retailers have limited purchases, leaving desperate parents searching for solutions. By the way, like 40 or 50% of like the baby formula in the world is manufactured in China. A lot of this is due to that as well. So, I mean, and of course, th this is related to the COVID PSYOP thing because uh, in China, partly why they're not able to pump out as much baby formula and produce as much is because they're in crazy 2020 style COVID lockdown, welding people's doors shut and uh, again and, and you know, uh, making everyone get tested every day. All this crazy, crazy stuff that it's, it's kind of like... 
mind boggling that they're, they're, they're in this type of lockdown while the other half of the world is kind of like free. So that's affecting this situation. The manufacturer of Ashley Hernandez's preferred baby formula of her two girls said it was out of stock on its website. Listings on eBay showed it would cost her up to $120 for a single can. And this is with stagflation and a, and a collapsing economy, by the way, just so everyone knows. Uh, so when she found a seller online offering 10 cans for 40 each, she expressed her desperation. I have two children. Uh, I cannot find baby formula. I can purchase this today. I can pay cash. Um, so, you know, they're desperate. Um, so there was a recall, like I said, uh, Abbott nutrition, a manufacturer of baby food, uh, recalled, um, their, their, uh, formula, much of their products, because at least four babies were hospitalized with bacterial infections and two died after consuming its products. But the problem is they didn't actually bother to test any of like all the baby formula they decided to destroy or, or recall or whatever. They just, you know, they could have salvaged much of it according to many people by the way so so this this is this is a real problem uh the fda of course you know being involved in this you just just don't you you know get rid of all of it let the baby starve you know don't don't try to salvage any of it um we know that our recent recall caused additional stress stress and anxiety in an already challenging situation of a global supply shortage Abbott said in a statement last month, we are working hard to keep moms, dads, and caregivers um, and have them get the high quality nutrition they need for their babies. Uh, Now, several other retailers are eager to preserve inventory and are limiting how much baby formula customers can buy. Um, Yeah. And again, this is a, a seriously affecting even more acutely the baby formulas designed for babies who have like specialty needs in terms of, you know, mineral or vitamin deficiencies or food allerg- allergies. Um, you know, so they have like, I, I don't know if this is like, a thing, but let's just say hypothetically like a dairy free or gluten free, like baby formula or something, the baby needs that. And that's especially short, especially low, especially hard to find. So, you know, a lot of these babies also can't be breastfed. Uh, some women can't produce and this is going to cause a lot of problems already is. This is a serious situation, yo. Like, like this is what a lot of people don't get. Of course, I'm not in that world because I don't have children, but I can only imagine that would be my number one concern right now if I had a newborn. Number one, like it would override everything else. So everybody who's in that situation, this is affecting them tremendously. And a good portion of you out there probably aren't in this situation. Not everyone has a newborn, right? But a lot of people might. And let me tell you, I'm, sh- I'm sure it's the first thing on your mind right now. So luckily, there are some of these House Republicans that have called for Biden to address the nationwide baby formula shortage. And this is something that literally just occurred a few hours ago. And you only have about 100 GOP lawmakers calling for the government to solve this situation as the lawmakers themselves, much of them, both in the GOP and Democrats, as I just discussed, approved $40 billion to give away your money to Zelensky. They could have used that to solve this problem. And this is how much these people hate you and do not care about you, except for, the, I guess, the 100 GOP, you know, uh, House representatives that are actually calling for this to be solved. Pfft. Yeah, most of them don't care. It's really interesting. As I went over in a previous video, of course, um, the Pfizer document said, you know, uh, you know, women shouldn't breastfeed if they took it. Um, uh, and of course, the the WHO would contradict that. Because I'm posting this on YouTube and I just want to tell everybody out there, do not listen 
to anybody except the WHO when it comes to your health advice. Good, good old, good old wink and nod, okay? <laughs> um, so yeah, Pfizer came, uh, came out with their document release that they were court ordered to release that I went over on a, on a video uh, that's only on BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble. Really interesting that they came out and said that or had to say that and now baby formula is running scarce and Bill Gates just so happens to be promoting his new artificial breast milk technology technology and this is all within a matter of two weeks and by the way there's also a lot of heated debate on Roe vs. Wade and whether or not you know women should be able to get rid of their babies um uh, you know, and, and so, so this is kind of interesting how this is all playing out in these narratives all in this one month of May, uh, all in the past few weeks. It makes you wonder, like, are these narratives pl uh, planned? And I think to a great extent they are. And I think, uh, you know, whether it's like a greater spiritual force, um, you know, or, or greater, spiritual principalities battling or some sort of worldly thing where there's like it just seems it's like planned on a certain level i don't know about you now as this is all going on inflation again at 40 year highs uh it's just rising more and more as they're rising interest rates it's not stopping the inflation we're almost at runaway inflation levels we're probably going to go into hyperinflation maybe either way we're going already in stagflation and and your politicians just want to give away your money um so inflation numbers came out today 8.3 percent and of course that is an underestimate according to many because they have changed how they calculate the consumer price index since the 80s and so a lot of people say that the inflation right now is actually closer to about double what they what they're telling you so it's really closer to like 15 or 20 percent per month and of course that's going to vary in in each you know um service or product because depending on supply and demand as well so um but you know how they calculate this is, is very mm, yeah it, it's very underestimated according to many so we're probably well above the 40-year high at this point and we're seeing the worst inflation america's ever seen ever period um that's my opinion i think we're already there and i think the numbers will have to reflect that eventually i don't even think they'll be able to hide it stagflation of course s p crashing crypto absolutely tanking look at terra or, or luna or whatever so those of you invested in luna it crashed what 95 percent oh no 95 percent. i don't know i think we can close the book on luna i think that's done mm, yeah so that's not good um and then the rest of the crypto market is of course crashing too bitcoin uh on the week down 26 percent. all the alt altcoins i mean never mind just luna Look at Cardano, man. I have so much money in Cardano. It sucks. I mean, it's 42% the past. Like, I, I, I'm really, I shouldn't even be looking at this. It's just making me depressed. Like, all my money's gone. So, like, this is just something you gotta going to have to do, though. Uh, it's just hodl. Um, at this point, I mean, I guess I, I'm not, I'm not going to give you financial advice, but I don't even see the point of selling at this point. Just, I don't know. It's already, <laughs> it's, just hold on for dear life. That's what I'm doing. I mean, I don't know. What, what am I supposed to do? I'm not going to sell when it's down 45%. <laughs> like, <laughs> it'll be this, even if it drops another 25% or something, it's just like, well, if it goes to zero, it goes to zero, whatever. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, but you know, they're killing chickens too. They're, they're killing your food supply. This is the organized destruction of our civilization, okay? It's a literal conspiracy. It's a literal conspiracy. That's what I think. Um, build back better. You know, it's it's Biden's plan for to build back better, right? This is what it's about, destroying everything in a way that it's like, okay, let's just destroy everything as fast as we can without causing everyone to riot. Of course, I don't think they're going to, I think people are going to riot this summer both because of the Roe versus Wade thing and because of the stagflation and food shortages too and baby formula shortages and all that. The next pandemic, the first American 
tests positive for bird flu, H5N1, and 5.3 million chickens have been murdered thanks to government officials and these corporations in charge of uh, big poultry, right? You know, they use these same PCR tests that Kerry Mullis himself said not to use to diagnose influenza or COVID or any, anything like that. They use these same tests that are, some say, I, I got to be careful, I'm on YouTube. Some say they're flawed, right? Some say they're flawed. Um, some say they're greatly flawed. They're using these same tests that ch- test these chickens that feed you and your family, that give you eggs and give you poultry so you can feed your you and your family. And they order them all murdered when a couple test positive for the bird flu. They smother them to, the, to death. They... Um, suffocate them this is this is what I'm this is, it's just so evil it's the most evil thing you can think of it's like not only are we going to starve everybody by killing 5.3 million chickens because of a stupid PCR test we give a couple of them that test positive but we're also going to do it in a heinous way we're going to smother them we're going to um you know we're going to choke them to death we're you know we're going to um we're just going to you know suffocate them like it's awful like look at this like i'm not i'm not like a huge animal rights activist but it's like we're gonna starve people and murder chickens like you are you are the devil like i'm sorry and then meanwhile but 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 you know what's important at least at least we gave 40 billion dollars to the Zelensky so he can dance on screen and and have you too perform at you know the, the subway station at least, at least we got that going for us. And someone's burning down all the food processing plants, of course, too. So there goes the other half of your meat supply. Food shortages, baby formula. Sure. Look, hey, at least Biden's uh, got his ministry of truth, which I'm going to be talking about, I think, in my next video. And we're going to also talk about uh, the person that was picked to head the ministry of truth, uh, Jankowitz, this lady right here, she is a character. Oh boy, this is going to be a fun one. I really do have to uh, get on this because I've been meaning to uh, talk about this for like a week now. I should make a video about this. We're not going to talk about it here though, but at least, you know, we have the ministry of truth. We have billions of dollars going to countries that isn't going to even help you as an average American family, but that's okay. And everything's going smooth. This is all exactly what I would do as president, you know? So just trust in Biden, trust in uh, the new world order, build back better. We're going to be freaking awesome. We are becoming the progressive uh, role model for the world. That's it. Let me know what you think. Give the video a good thumbs up. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, also, follow me on Twitter and Gab. And uh, join the um, Telegram group, t.me slash resisting the reset. And then if you want to contribute to my work, I have a Patreon in the description below where you can become a Patreon member. Crypto links as well, even though crypto is right now. You can contribute though. It's been pressed. Keep your head up. Stay real and no fear.